Welcome. What we have here is an AC circuit connected in series with the resistor, inductor, and capacitor. And this is kind of form a general overarching case of what we need to do. So let's take a look at what we did last time. Last time we said if we use the loop rule, that it would be too complicated. But we can use the junction rule. Looking at this junction, whatever current goes to the source has to be the same current that goes to the resistor. Whatever current that goes to the resistor has to go through the inductor. Whatever goes to the inductor has to go through the capacitor. So what we can do is we can write this mathematically in the junction rule that the current over the resistor as a function of time is the current over the inductor as a function of time is the current over the capacitor as a function of time is the current over the source as a function of time. And then we can treat that as having zero phase angle, then just call it I max cosine omega t. So we're saying current is the shared measurement. And we can then set its phase to zero. So if we're drawing a phasor diagram, then we can draw a vector with value i max and what we are saying is that at this specific time this will then be the current as a function of that time. At a later time we will still have the same length of this vector i max, so this is some t plus delta t, then the current being the cosine of this angle will have evolved a bit. And so then we can show that the current kind of right oscillates or alternates, if you will, between these values. So if we have that, this is showing how phasors represent alternating current. I can draw a different phasor at just one time for my current. And usually for that one time for our current, we like an angle between 0 and 90 degrees. Just makes things that tiny bit easier. If current is our shared measurement, then what we can do is we can look at what the different voltages will look at relative to the current. So easiest is that the voltage of the resistor is R times I max, and then the resistor is going to be in phase with our current. So we can write this as a vector in phase with our current. And it's going to have a value of V sub R. So this value, V sub R, and we're ignoring the max for right now just because it's too many subscripts. So this is a constant value. You can see R is constant, I max is constant, and we have V sub R. We can do the same for V sub L as a function of time. That would be omega L I max. And then the inductor is not in phase with the current. The voltage of an inductor is ahead by 90 degrees. So we can represent this by plus pi over 2. And so we can represent that as a value like this, V sub L. And so we have that V sub L maximum is omega L I max. And we have, lastly, the voltage of our capacitor as a function of time is capital I max over omega C cosine. And then our capacitor is 90 degrees behind the current minus pi over 2. So this is then our capital V sub C. And we have then capital V sub C is capital I max over omega C. So if we want to add all these, instead of adding their x projections, 
these are vectors that right, are constantly all rotating, and they don't change phase relative to each other. So if we look at just one moment of time, it will help us for all moments of time. Looking at this then, we have our VL and our VC add as vectors. So we can then get a vector that is VL vector plus VC vector, where the magnitude of VL plus VC vector is equal to the magnitude of VL minus the magnitude of VC. So note, if VC was larger, this would be negative, but in this case, it is smaller. And so then we can then draw a right triangle with VR. So this is still VL vector plus VC vector, although you might see very often VL minus VC if they're talking about magnitudes. And then using Pythagorean theorem or using just addition of vectors, this being 90 degrees, we can get a vector of the voltage of our source. Well, this is pretty ugly, so let's redraw it just down here a little bit. We have the voltage of our resistor, just to appease those who don't like vector math, we can do, right, VL minus VC, and then we have the voltage of our source. And again, we still have our current, the maximum value. So one cool thing we can see with this is that we have just, yes, Pythagorean theorem. So the voltage of our source maximum squared, hypotenusal theory, is equal to capital V sub R squared plus the magnitude of V sub L minus V sub C quantity squared. This is the voltage dropped by all of these different things. So at this moment, if we don't have any of these certain elements, we just erase that element. So if we have just an RL circuit, this V sub C is zero. If we have just an RC circuit, V sub L is zero. If we have just a LC circuit, V sub R is zero. So just to avoid any right, cancellations over here. But now we can plug in our VLs, VRs, and VCs. And so we have V sub source squared is equal to R squared I max squared plus, and I have an I max for both of these, so I'm going to factor that out just to make my life the tiny bit easier. And so I have omega L minus 1 over omega C quantity squared. So I still have this I max squared, I still have this I max squared, so I in fact can factor the I max squared out even more, and then I will get R squared plus omega L minus one over omega C quantity squared, I max squared. So this looks very similar to Ohm's law, right? The voltage equals R times I. So right, we have again for DC circuits, V is equal to R times I. In this case, for AC circuits, if I take the square root of this, I will get, again, the voltage of my source maximum is equal to the square root of R squared plus omega L minus 1 over omega C quantity squared I max. So this is my relationship for AC circuits. It's a relationship between the voltage and the current. So a couple of fun things to look at. Our first fun thing to look at is if we want to reduce this and we are allowed to change the frequency of our operation, we can't reduce the resistance but this can get smaller and smaller and smaller until it gets negative and then it gets larger and larger and larger. So the smallest this term can be is zero because zero squared will give us the smallest for that. So our impedance, Z, 
which is this square root of r squared plus omega l minus 1 over omega c quantity squared is a function of omega. And so z of a function of omega is minimum when omega l minus 1 over omega c is equal to 0. So just a little bit of math, bring this omega c over, multiply both sides by omega, divide by l. We get then that omega squared equals 1 over lc, or we get that when omega is equal to 1 over the square root of lc. One last trick that we can do is taking a look at this triangle that we made for ourselves. This angle phi is the phase angle between current and the voltage of the source. So we can look at this in terms of a tangent. We can say that the tangent of V is equal to what's on top, or what's opposite, VL minus VC. So omega L minus 1 over omega C I max over V sub R maximum, R times I max. And so then we can cancel these two out. And we get that our phase angle is equal to the arc tangent of omega L minus 1 over omega C over R. Funny enough, we have seen this omega L minus 1 over omega C right here, right here, when talking about this impedance, that when the impedance is at a minimum, omega is 1 over the square root of LC. If we plug this in, this will become 0 itself, and then the angle will be 0. So our voltage of our source and our current will have the lowest impedance and be in phase when omega is tuned with the induction and capacitance of this circuit.